Welcome to my day three recap of Brutal Assault. This is from the third day of four. Um, you can see my day one and two on the channel, but I did the recap of the bands that I saw on each day. So in this video, I'll talk about, about the bands that I saw yesterday and um, tell you which ones were good, which ones surprised me and all that stuff. Uh, if you stay tuned on the channel and subscribe, then I will do a summary video at the end of the festival where I'll kind of take the whole thing a little bit more about the atmosphere, the people, the food and all that stuff, the organization and how everything works here. And those of you who don't know Brutal Assault, it's a 150 band extreme metal festival held every year here in the Czech Republic in an old military fortress. And we're talking a little bit like a heavier stuff, extreme as the word indicates. So uh, there is also a playlist on the channel called Brutal Assault 2023, which kind of uh, features, well, kind of, it features a lot of songs from the bands that are playing and that we managed to catch at the festival. So check out that playlist, Brutal Assault 2023. Um, so day three, what a fucking day. Uh, we had it out kind of late. I had this um, fear of missing out somehow because we didn't go there until like four o'clock or something and uh, I felt a little bit guilty you know how it is you paid something you were go going somewhere and then you kind of want to suck it all in but we knew that we had to stay late so we went a little bit late in and um, when I when we came there was this band on stage called Knocked Loose that's kind of a US metalcore beatdown band uh, they're obviously more popular than I realized because I didn't really know them but uh, they had the crowd with them. Uh, the crowd fucking loved it. There was this mosh pit and people like, you know, head banging like crazy and stuff like that. For me, this, you know, I, I, I like the atmosphere, but I don't like this music somehow. And uh, it kind of just feels like one riff repeated over and over again. And then some mm, <coughs> screaming. And, uh, but you know, I get it. Some people are into this. I'm just not one of them. Um, then I saw Nile. That's like an uh, older, I would say, I think they started like in 92, 93 in the US death metal band. And they have this kind of Egyptian HP Lovecraft themes in their songs. A little bit too technical for me, and but it actually grew kind of, I don't know if they, in the program, they played some older stuff first and then newer stuff or the other way around or something. But it, it kind of became better as it went along. And, um, and then I decided to stay there. I was going to go and wander around, but I thought, okay, I'll just stay here. And that was turned out to be a good idea because then I saw this band Burknagar, which is a, a black folk Viking metal, I don't know, or something like that. I think they're from Sweden, actually. I'm not sure. I should have checked. But um, that's a really interesting band because it's kind of like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. The songs kind of can't go anywhere. And they have these cool vocal harmonies and clean vocals and dirty vocals and growling and, and you know, like... It's a little bit of everything, and it's definitely a band that I will check out more. Burknagar. It's in Icelandic, means someone who eats the tree bark. I don't know if that, that's what they were trying to communicate. Um, and then came a moment that I'd been waiting for. There was Cataclysm. I had seen them before. I saw them in Palace Acropolis in Prague uh, in a 150 people club last autumn, and that was great. But. Um, and I, I thought, okay, yeah, it would be interesting to see if they can transmit that energy onto a huge stage with, you know, 25,000 people watching or something. And um, they had just released yesterday, on the day of the gig, they released a new album called Goliath. And I had listened to it two or three times in the morning when I woke up. It's a super solid album, especially there's this one song called uh, Black Sheep that they actually played at the end of the concert yesterday. It's amazing. And it's here on the channel. Um, they just, you know, they were in great form. They got the crowd going crazy. And it made me think about, because actually I like them more live than I like them on albums. So, and, and maybe they write great live songs and just not great album songs. But it was made me think about this, you know, that are there some bands that you actually like live, but you don't really listen to the album? For me, Cataclysm is actually one of those bands. I mean, I, I just told you I listened to the new album, but I probably won't put it on again, you know? Um, and the, the crowd was nuts. I've never seen it was like a carpet of people just crowd surfing and they were encouraging it, the band on stage. And, and I felt sorry for the band that's going to come on afterwards because, you know, it's kind of like you come home and you go to your bedroom and Rocco Sifredi comes out. You're not really going to go in there, you know, because it's Rocco Sifredi, you know, and, and Cataclysm is definitely the Rocco Sifredi of, of uh, this kind of music, you know, this kind of grooving death metal somehow. Um, and the band that was unlucky enough to come on after 
uh, Rocco finished with Cataclysm. Uh, that's a band called Silen, Silen Ardor. And that's some sort of an avant-garde, uh, soul, funky, black metal. It's a weird mix. But a very interesting thing. Um, not necessarily something that I would have found myself, but I'm happy that I found them. I'm going to actually... Talking about girlfriends, I'm gonna give them to my girlfriend and try to use them kind of as a gateway drug for to get her to go to festivals like this with me. Um, and then came another big moment for me. That was Obituary, you know, old school Florida death metal. They came out last year with a new album called uh, Dying of Everything, I think. Yeah, and um, and I saw them in the autumn in Prague, and they were great. But I felt that. Maybe they were a little bit rusty there. I don't know. It was one of the first gigs on the tour or something like that. But I don't know. But yesterday they were in great form. They were much better than last time. Um, and they played this song called Barely Alive, which we have on the channel, uh, which the drummer, uh, Tarti, what's his name? I don't remember. Tarti. Uh, he had said that he was worried about playing this song live because it's so fast. And it is fast. And he played it and he got away with it. And it was great. And he is an amazing drummer, actually. And, uh, uh, yeah, then it was funny, you know, like, when there were like three or four songs left, John Tarty, the singer, just said, thank you. And I thought, okay, there's one more song. But then they played three more songs, and when they finished, he just, he just went off. The other guy stayed on. It, it, it was so weird. And it was actually the same when they played in Prague. He just left. You know, you have a feeling that, you know, he's going to a meeting or something like that. He's really in a hurry. But obituary, they were great. Um, and then, kind of thanks to my laziness, I stayed around that area, and these are two stages next to each other that they, you know, they play in one and prepare the other one, and then just deal. Yeah, okay. So I saw this band Perturbator. Perturbator. They're from Finland. That's kind of like a synth wave, cyberpunk, electronic something. And it's just a guitar and a keyboard, one guy with that, and then a guy on drums in, in some cages. It's kind of... I don't know, gives you this kind of futuristic post-apocalypse vibe somehow. Um, and it's again, it's something that I would never really check out myself, but I'm super happy that I was exposed to it and I could see it, because it's, it's definitely interesting. Um, and then I decided to walk over to another stage that's kind of off, you have to go behind and to, to this stage called Obscure, which hosts kind of smaller bands, but I mean, I saw I Am Morbid there, so that's a huge band, but... And they had this band Cult of Fire. It's a it's a Czech black metal band, and they were obviously popular by the locals because there was a huge crowd, and it was very interesting. I didn't really know what to expect. They were kind of sitting on the stage. They have these kind of huge stage props, and yeah, it almost feels like a ritual. The singer has this black veil, and and he's singing through that, and and there is fire on the stage, and 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 just two guitars, no bass, drums, two guitars, and the singer, and. Um, and I was very positively surprised. It's a great band. They have really kind of cool melody, melodies in their, in their, it's atmospheric somehow. Yeah, cool melodies and, and just, yeah, it was, there was something about it. I'm definitely going to go and see them again. And uh, I took my chances because I, you know, it's a local band. So I only checked out five songs, I think, because I wanted to go and see SDI. Um, and since Cult of Fire is local, I can see them again. So I went to see SDI. SDI is a German thrash metal band. Speed Thrust Metal, founded in 85. And uh, I saw them actually earlier in December in, in this Basin Fire Festival and I found the singer so funny. It kind of gives you a feeling that you're going back in time because he's just saying the same stuff as he was saying in 85. And, uh, and in, in the summer he said that this is the best Thrust Metal song ever written, this is the best song I ever wrote. He has, he has a very, very high uh, views on his own music, which I really like. And, and I just kind of want to pay him tribute also because he kind of stepped in last minute to, to replace Overkill, who got sick. I think two members from the band got sick. So, um, yeah, and it kind of, yeah, it's loyal to the roots. I mean, and as I said, the singer is funny. He talks between the songs and stuff like that. But it actually was, it was nice to see. I mean, it wasn't a huge crowd because obviously people wanted to, you know, see something else or they had bought the ticket to see something else. But yeah, he has the best song and best thrash metal song and the best song that he ever wrote. Rein, uh, Reinhard Cruz, I think his name is. Uh, stayed on there to see Gorgoroth, a uh, Norwegian black metal band from 92, 3 or something like that. 
And this was probably a unique uh, show because uh, the, this guy, what's his name, uh, Infernus, the founding member, guitarist, he, he wasn't on stage. Um, he was in hospital, he sent his best wishes to the fans and the, state, and the band performed the show without him. That's probably never happened before with this band. So I was witness to something very unique. Full of energy, um, very kind of low key, no stage props or anything like that, but they, they just blasted it. And I think it would be really interesting to see Gorgoroth again when there are two guitar players. Um, I, because if they can do this with one, I would like to see what they can do with two. Uh, then came the moment that had kind of driven us to come late during the day. That's Mr. Ming from Iceland. That's kind of a, yeah, I would say like melodic black metal, but uh, in their own way somehow. They mix also elements of just kind of pure rock. You can hear even some surf rock vibes in the guitar tones and stuff like that. And But still, they deliver it very kind of brutally and they're really cool on stage. Um, and... Uh, I saw them a few years ago, but in the meantime, they came with a new album and they have, in my mind, and I get goosebumps when I say this, the best ever black metal song. It's called Islands, uh, Island Steingelda Krummersku, which means Iceland, yeah, horrible, uh, well, Iceland, what is it called? Neutralized shithole, whatever. Um, it's hard to translate, but that song is just amazing. And, uh, and then... I, I loved that gig and we stayed the whole time. They finished at three o'clock in the night and uh, and then I heard people on the way out saying that this was one of the highlights of the day and I can see why they say that, that, you know, this band just delivers. So for me, kind of to sum it up, uh, the highlight of the day was Cataclysm um, and then Mistermink for sure and Obituary. And then I give a shout out to Berknagar because that was really, really interesting. I mean, the other bands were good, but these these bands are the kind of the highlights for me. I'm curious to hear if you were there, what bands were the highlight for you and uh, what bands have been the highlight in the festival so far. Today I'm going to see Omnium Gathering, uh, I'm going to see Infected Rain, um, Anal Nakrat or something like that. It's, I don't really know, but it just the name was very intriguing. Uh, D-Side, Napalm Death, Trivium, Benediction, and Hypocrisy. I mean, this is on one fucking day, but this is day four, last day. I hope I'm going to be able to stay up the whole time. It's, it, it's getting a little bit, I'm getting rusty, you know. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. So, playlist on the channel. Check out our Instagram, Metal and Rock Zone. We share stories and stuff from, from things as they're happening. We sometimes go live as well. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this. Thank you very much. Have a great day.